All right, so um, today I'm going to give you a little bit of introductory training to using Card Defender. So on the left hand side, you have uh, Microsoft RMS, the point of sale. Um, and this screen probably looks different than how it looks on your computer. But don't be worried if it does. The point of sale is configured in a lot of different ways for a lot of different clients. Um, but uh, still, Microsoft RMS works essentially the same way. Um, on the right hand side is the payment terminal. Um, so that's hooked up to a webcam here. So you can see uh, what it looks like and you'll see me pressing buttons and whatnot. Now to just give a quick explanation, this slot right here is where the credit card actually gets swiped. Uh, down here at the bottom is the pin pad. This is used if uh, somebody needs to enter a debit pin um, on a debit transaction, for example. Or one important button right there is that red one. That allows a customer to abort a transaction. And then over here, we have the stylus. And by the way, customers can use the stylus or a human finger works just about as well. Um, so I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer here because otherwise some of this text might be difficult to see. Um, all right. Okay. So I'm going to run uh, a really simple transaction here. Um, I'll ring up an item. I'm going to ring it up for a small amount because we're going to do some actual transactions here. Um, so I'll make it four cents. And so I, I ring up my products as I normally would. And, and, and really the only thing that's going to be special about your point of sale transactions is in terms of how it looks is this button over here that says batch electronic payments. Um, this is a function that we'll use at the end of the night, and we'll come back to this. So um, I'll ring up an item, and now I'll go to one of the tender types that I have set up uh, to, to process um, through the payment terminal. So in this case, I'm using credit cards and debit cards. But one important note here is that I could potentially set up like my account tender type to work through the payment terminal or WIC or something like that. Now, credit cards and debit cards are going to process by relaying this message to a credit card company, but something like on account is not. However, you can still utilize it to capture a signature, um, even if you're not actually swiping a credit card. So instead of having them sign a piece of paper, you can have them sign it through the payment terminal and then it will store it with that transaction. But for the sake of this transaction, I'm going to choose credit card. So notice that um, I have a prompt appearing saying customer needs to use the terminal to finalize the transaction. Note there is no cancel button here. The cashier cannot stop this process once it's been initiated. Only the customer can. And that's to avoid you know, somebody swiping a card and starting to process and the cashier backing out. So to cancel, have the customer hit the red X key. Now that was that red button I pointed to earlier. I'm going to hit that just to show you what that looks like. Okay, and it says aborted. All right. Now if you wait too long, you'll get the same message. Let's say it takes a while for the customer to fish it out of their wallet. You'll get that message. Um, just come back to the screen, say OK again and no worries. So now I'm going to actually swipe a card. Okay, and you'll see it says, please wait. All right, that means that it processed successfully. Now it's asking me to sign. Okay, so I'll just, oops. Okay, and so the transaction's completed and it's sending the signature to RMS right now. Um, transaction completes, receipts, prints, everybody's happy. Now, let's take a look at what that looks like in the journal. So here's what the receipt looks like. Now notice at the top, our system is using RMS's reference number to store this big, long, you know, odd looking number. Now, this is actually a token that represents that credit card transaction. 
The system does not store any credit card numbers whatsoever. I'm actually going to back this up just a little bit. I think we're not recording the whole thing. Um, so it doesn't store any credit card numbers, um, but it does have this token. So this is how it's linked to the transactions occurring in the payment terminal. Um, and then also notice that there is no uh, signature on the receipt. So having somebody's signature floating around or they throw away their receipt or whatever is a little bit dangerous from a security standpoint, so it's not printed on the receipt. However, if you ever need it, okay, you're in the journal, you can go to tenders, and, you know, there's that sorry excuse of a signature that I, I, I did on the screen. Um, and you can print this out, for example, if you ever need any kind of proof. Okay. I'm going to do another transaction. This time, I'm going to sell an item for one cent. All right, what's important here, the difference between four cents and one cent, is that I've set up the, um, the, the limit for a transaction to require a signature, the signature threshold, to be four cents. So in the first transaction, it required a signature because it was four cents. But now that it's only one cent, and this is on a per tender basis, so it could be different for debit cards versus credit cards versus um, on account, for example. But now I'm going to swipe my card again. And now instead of prompting me for a signature, you'll see that it just finishes. I'm sorry. That's actually a good example. So that actually, uh, didn't go to my plan, but it's okay. I did a transaction a little bit earlier for one cent on the same credit card, and it's telling me do transaction. So the, the, the terminals have safeguards built in so that if you try and run the same transaction, the same amount on the same card on the same terminal, that's key, on the same terminal, you'll get a duplicate transaction error. So if it's legitimate and they really do want to buy the same thing for the same amount, you have a couple of options. One, just have them go to a different terminal. Life is good. And two, uh, you could have them use a different, a different credit card. Um, but this, um, this is to protect you from any kind of, kind of errors. So what we're going to do, I'm going to change this to two cents. It accomplishes the same goal for us. All right. Notice, you know, credit card payment type. It's all pretty easy for the cashier to read. Oops. Okay. And now you can see it did not ask me to sign. It just completed the transaction. No signature required. It processes a little bit faster as well. Okay, so next we're going to take a look at what a debit card transaction looks like and uh, also what a decline looks like. So um, I'm going to ring up an item here and uh, we'll go to 10 to this. This time we're going to choose debit card. All right, the uh, prompt for the cashier looks the same, right, except it says debit card payment type. So I'm going to swipe a debit card. And I am going to get a decline, by the way. Um, so I'll swipe it. Now, notice there's a prompt now. Um, it's saying enter your PIN, you know, confirm your amount, enter your PIN. So I'm just going to enter something in. Okay, and here comes the decline. All right, it says encryption error because the encryption on these units has to be uh, linked to your actual payment processor, and this is just a test unit here. Um, but but the idea is still important, right? If if the card was maxed out or for whatever reason, you would get this kind of a message. Now it says encryption error. That's a specific kind of message, but normally it would say declined, and it would just say declined. So. Now you get a sense of uh, what it looks like if somebody does a debit card, they'll be asked to enter the PIN, and then also what a decline looks like. Um, one important thing about declines, with the vast majority of processors, 
you cannot require a signature. That might change depending on who your processor is, but with most processors, you do not collect a signature on debit cards because the PIN number is really the proof of identification. Um, so now, by the way, I'm free to, um, to go back to the transaction and choose another tender type, which uh, leads to another scenario that you might want to perform. Um, what if I want to charge this to more than one credit card? So um, I could say three cents on this tender type, and now you do have to have it enabled. So you can turn this on and off, but you have to allow R you have to tell RMS that you want to allow multiple tender types, um, or mul allow multiple tendering to the same tender types. So you can see credit card just split into two. Now I could put another amount in here. I could say six cents, um, and then I could put the rest on a debit card. So now you can see it's prompting us to take the first payment type. And I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, it'll process the first one. And once it completes, it'll prompt me to do the second one. And now it's asking for six cents. There we go. Whoops. All right, so now it's asking for six cents. And it will actually, in this case, it'll ask me for a signature because of that threshold. I set it to four cents. And now it's going to ask me for the debit card. In just a moment. Okay, so now my debit card is actually going to decline. Okay, and it's asking me for a pin. And I hit the green button to say OK. And so this is kind of interesting. The first two were approved, and now this third one is going to give me an error. OK, so it says all processed electronic payments will attempt to revert. So actually, when I click OK, it's going to revert those two charges, the first two that went through successfully. So uh, pretty slick that you can take multiple credit card tender types if you need to, uh, even better then in the case where one didn't work as expected, it will revert the ones uh, that did. All right, so um, the next piece of functionality I want to talk about is settling the batch. Okay, so settling the batch is something that you need to do each night on each payment terminal. Um, we had discussed uh, making the application so that it automatically settled. And while we saw that as a great convenience for a customer, it's also a, a great um, threat as well. There's a lot of risk in that. So instead, the conclusion we came to is, let's have people settle on each till each night, and let's make sure it's really easy. So it's, it's really simple. And you don't have to do this at night. I mean, you theoretically could do this at any point that you want uh, during the course of a day. And essentially it's, you know, it's one button click. So we say batch electronic payments. And what this is doing is it's taking all the credit cards that have been pre-authorizing, pre-authorized during the day, and it's confirming that with the credit card company. Um, now, um, depending on the payment processor that you use, you may get a prompt. A Mercury payments is the test that I've set up. And you just select the top option here to settle credit cards specifically. Most, uh, most processors will not require you to hit any kind of button. It'll just go through and then you'll see this message here. And um, essentially it says, here's how many dollars that were in the payment terminal. Here's how many dollars were, did, we, did we see inside RMS that had uh, credit card transactions linked to this payment terminal. And the two should balance, and so they do. Seven cents and seven cents, and three transactions on each. Um, so it's important to do this every night. Um, and, and the reason, again, why we're, we want a little bit of human involvement here is because if there's ever anything wrong, you have a very short window to resolve this problem. You know, think, 
48 to 72 hours. You know, short window, and if you don't resolve it within that period of time, then you've got a problem. You know, you might not be able to get some of your credit card money. So because of that risk, hit the button, and if there's a problem, you'll get some special notification, some special messaging, and then you can resolve the issue in a timely manner.